You ever climb into your race car, sit down in the seat, look in front of you at the beautiful aim dash and go, man, I don't have fuel level anymore. Hey guys, I'm Brick with AIM Sports and today we are talking about custom fuel level sensors. This one is a little more in depth than the last couple tech tips I've done. So buckle up, cause just like a weekend camping trip, this one's intense. So you guys probably know by now, I'm gonna tell you to go to Race Studio 3, link in the description if you still need to download it. But first, we gotta get through some disclaimers on this one. It says here that fuel sender resistance ranges vary greatly. There are some where the range is just too small and we won't be able to get a good reading from those. If that's the case, an aftermarket fuel sender is recommended. Fuel tank shapes vary greatly. That means that the curve for the sensor is not always gonna be completely linear. This is why we wanna get as many data points as we can, so that way we can closely follow the shape of the tank, keep everything accurate. Fuel slosh is a thing. That's just always gonna be a thing. Some slosh is greater than others. Something we gotta deal with. And lastly, everything in this video is just for example, because fuel level senders and applications vary greatly. Whew. All right, now that we're through the boring stuff, let's get started. Most fuel senders read in a resistance value. We need to convert that into a voltage in order to add it to one of our analog channels. So to start, we're gonna do hardware first. As far as getting the signal from your fuel level sensor into your aim device, the easiest thing to do is to take one of our channel patch cables, cut the sensor end off, and that'll give you access to the wires that are inside. In there, you'll find a white signal wire. That's gonna to go to the signal wire on your fuel sender. You'll also find a blue five volt reference wire. That's gonna be connected to the signal wire using a 2700 ohm resistor. Then you'll also find black and red wires. Those don't get used in this instance, so just cap them. For this example, I just use DTM connectors, but there are a number of ways you can do this as long as the circuit gets set up in the same way. Now you might be saying, Brick, why do I need to use a 2700 ohm resistor? Well, we need at least that much resistance to keep from pulling too many amps from our five volt source. 2700 ohms is always the safe bet for most applications. Now in rare instances, if you have some fuel level sensor that reads on some wild astronomical range where it's like a thousand to a hundred thousand ohms, then you could use a 1700 ohm resistor just to give yourself a little better resolution. Just always remember, if you add the low side resistance range from your fuel sender and the resistor that you're using, they need to equal out to at least 2700 ohms. So now that we have our hardware set up and we can get a voltage value from that channel, we need to get some data points so we can build our custom sensor. So that cable that we just made that's connected to the fuel sensor, that's just gonna go into one of the analog channels for your data logger. Then once we have the hardware side of things done, we need to go into Race Studio 3, build a configuration, and get some data points for that channel now that we have a voltage reading. So we're gonna open our Race Studio 3 software. We're gonna go to the configurations page. We're just gonna start a new configuration. Um, pro tip, if you're using one of the TFT displays, there are a lot of versions of those. Make sure you pick the right one. For this example, I'm just gonna use an MXS because that's what I have displayed here. All right, so once we open up our configuration, we wanna be on the channels tab. We're just gonna use channel one for an example. So we'll make sure we put a check in that box so that way that channel is being used. It's already set to generic zero to five volt, which is what we want. I'm just gonna name this fuel test. And at the moment, we just wanna leave the function as voltage and the sensor as generic zero to five volts. So we'll click save. Then just for fun, so we can display the voltage on the unit itself. We're just gonna go over to the display tab here. And in this data field, we're gonna go to AD channels and you can see I have fuel test right there. So we'll double click on that and now that populates right here. Then we're just gonna connect to the MXS that I have sitting right next to me for this example. And then another pro tip, whenever you're making changes to a configuration, make sure you save it so it's stored on your computer and then transmit. So that way the changes take effect on your unit. All right, configuration successfully transmitted, okay. All right, so now our hardware is set up and we're able to receive a voltage signal from our fuel level sender. Now for this example, since I'm not doing this on an actual car, we're just gonna use one of our Eclipse linear potentiometers to simulate filling the fuel tank. So the next step is getting the actual data points that we use for setting up our custom fuel level sensor. So we are gonna go right up here to connected devices, still connected to my MXS. We'll click on that to populate this side. And it should default to the live measures tab, which is where we wanna be. This is just gonna show you live readings from the unit that you're connected to. Then if we just click the MV or millivolt button right here, that'll give us the millivolt values for all of our channels. Here you can see the sensor that we just set up, our fuel test, if we click on that, it'll make it nice and big right here so we can see what's going on. So technically all we need to make the sensor work is 
two data points, a full and an empty reading, but for the most accuracy, start with an empty tank and just add a gallon or small increments at a time and take a millivolt value each time you do that until you get to full. Just remember the more data points you collect as you're filling the tank up, the more accurate this reading is gonna be. All right, so now we're just gonna switch over to my MXS setup. This is the analog channel that we just set up that's currently just reading the raw voltage value and we're gonna pretend this eclipse potentiometer is me filling the tank. So right now, all the way closed, we're gonna say this is an empty tank. And with our empty tank, we can see right up here, the millivolt value is right around 475. So we're just gonna make a note of that. Empty, 475 millivolts. So now we're gonna pretend that me moving this eclipse potentiometer just a little bit simulates adding fuel to the tank. So say that's one gallon. So now after we've added one gallon, we're at 1056 millivolts. So we're gonna write that down. And we just keep doing that until the tank is full. Add another gallon, now we're at 1412. Another gallon, 1713. And don't you worry, this is all gonna make a lot of sense once we get to the custom sensor. Another one. And last, because we're just gonna say this is a 10 gallon tank, 4752. Right, so now that our tank is full and we have all of our data points, this is the part you've all been waiting for. It's time to build a custom sensor. In Ray Studio 3, we're gonna go up to this icon right here, click on that, that'll take us to our custom sensor page. We're gonna click on new custom sensor right here. It's gonna ask us to name it, we're gonna call it Fuel Test. Okay, so for the custom sensors, there's a few parameters we can select up here, and there's also a table that we can add to to add our millivolt values. We're basically gonna use a unit of measure and the voltage and tell it what's what. So for our measure type, we're gonna go down here to volume and fuel level. Calibration type is gonna be none, input type is gonna be millivolts, and these last two options we don't have to worry about in this case, just leave those unchecked. Now we're just gonna use this table right here to enter in all those millivolt values that we have for our sensor curve. So we're gonna change this to gallons. Our empty millivolt reading was 475. After that we had a reading of 1056, and that was for one gallon. We'll hit this plus button to add another data point. Our next voltage value was 1412, and that was for two gallons. I think you can see where this is going. All right, so, and as we enter these things in, you can see if we go over here to the curve, it's not exactly linear. So in a real world situation, that just means that we have a tank that's maybe a little bit of an odd shape, but that is pretty normal. 4752, and you'll see the graph changing shape as I enter these in. So that's 10 gallons. And there it is, that is the curve for our custom sensor. Now, our aim dash knows how to interpret the voltage signal that's coming in from the custom sensor and can give you a fuel level reading. We'll just make sure we click the save button. And now that we have this set up, when you go into the configuration of any of the other devices, if there's a place where this type of sensor can be applied, you're gonna see this sensor that we just made in the drop down menu. For example, if we go back to configurations, we're gonna go back to channels. And now for our fuel level channel, we can actually select that sensor that we just made. So we're gonna change the function now to volume fuel level. And you can see here, it already selected our fuel test sensor. So it's under custom sensors, fuel test, that's the one we want right there. Other things in the setup, uh, for those of you who don't know, the sampling frequency is basically the number of times we are sampling data from this sensor. So in this example, 20 Hertz is 20 times per second. Units of measure, we're using gallons for this instance. And then we can decide if we just want whole numbers or if we wanna display decimal places. Just so you guys know, you can also change the function and display this as a fuel level percentage. The only problem with doing it that way is if we're doing it in percentage, we don't get to add a filter to it, which helps with slosh. So if we leave it set up as a volume and fuel level, then we get this filter down here, which most of the time we want. So what this filter is for is for taking an average reading from the fuel level sensor, so that way we can kind of adjust and account for things like slosh. So just to clarify what I mean by slosh, that's for example, if you're going around to turn the gravitational forces, pushing all the fuel to one side of the fuel tank and causing the fuel level to read a little bit off. So this is gonna be something that's very application specific. Might end up being a little trial and error to see which filter setting works best for your particular setup. Just play around with it see what works best for you. So once we're done setting that channel up, just remember to save it. Then we'll just go back over to our display tab. Now that we've changed some things on the sensor, we just need to reselect it. So we'll go back to AD channels, fuel test, and then golden rules of making changes to your configuration. Make sure you click save, so that way it saves it onto your computer. Then transmit, so we actually transmit those configuration changes over to your unit. Great, once we have that transmitted, we'll head back over to our device and see if it's working. Alrighty, so here we have our fuel level. We're just gonna fill the tank. Oh, there's one gallon, two, three, fill in the tank, four gallons. Let's go all the way full. 
10 gallons, full tank, everybody's happy. Congratulations, everyone. We now have a working fuel level in our race car. So then of course you can use that channel to also set low fuel alarms and things like that. That way we're not running out of gas. Whoo, all right, we made it. Were you guys able to follow me through all that? Good, also give us a follow on Instagram at aimsportsdata. If this was helpful to you, give us a double thumbs up. If you wanna see some more, give us a subscribe. And if you have something you want us to cover, let us know down here in the comments. We did it, custom fuel level sensors for everyone, and we will see you next time. Take care.